This might shock some people, but minimalism is not the only path to a clutter-free home. The truth is clutter-free is completely subjective and it's really just about surrounding yourselves with things that you use and that make you happy. If you love your seven lamps, keep them. If you love that weird knickknack from 12 years ago, keep it. If you use 17 spatulas, keep them. Wait, that might be a smidge too much. And this is why there are some areas in my home that I never declutter. And some of you might disagree. Let's start with the first area of my home that I never declutter and it's a controversial one, books. Books are incredibly subjective. Let me share a story with you all. I had a client named Amy. Amy had hundreds of books and boxes all over her living room, bedroom, entryway, and yes, even the garage. Some were boxed up while others were just sporadically laid out. They covered surfaces, created that dreaded visual clutter look, were dusty and made her feel suffocated in her home. They were also a huge fall risk because they blocked walkways. Amy struggled to part with them because she felt wasteful. She had spent so much money on them over the years. Her kids' college textbooks, books she handpicked at the thrift stores and garage sales over the years. They suffocated her and made her feel guilty, yet she struggled to part with them because she felt wasteful. Now on the other side of the pond was Donna. She too had hundreds of books meticulously organized on her floor to ceiling bookshelves. She read each and every one of these books, some multiple times. Her favorites, she could recite verbatim. When you entered her home, Donna instantly took you to her wall of pride and showed off her incredible collection, organized by genre and soft versus hardcover. And of course, in alphabetical order. She was incredibly proud of it. Entering this portion of her home was like walking into a beautiful library. To Donna, one of the proudest days of her life was when she published her first book, and was able to add it to her personal collection. You see, to Donna, these books were not clutter. I am Donna. You see, while to some books are an eyesore with their different colored covers and sizes, to me, they are a source of joy and pleasure in life. Once a week, I pull out one book from my library, cuddle up with it in my favorite cozy nook area, and read. This area of my home will not be touched. Next area of my home that I never declutter are sentimental items. I actually don't have many sentimental items. I tend to not really be the sentimental type, but over the years, I have accrued some artwork from my daughter, her first baby hat, her first Christmas outfit, and I've held on to a few items from my own childhood, this very disheveled looking bear being one of them. All of my sentimental items fit comfortably in one box, and this box is labeled, and truth be told, I don't touch it at all. It's stored comfortably on the top shelf of my closet, and my game plan is to toss it when I get older because while these items are sentimental to me, they won't be sentimental to anyone else. I think it's wonderful to hold on to memories, sentimental items, and things that matter to us. It becomes clutter when we assign sentimental value to too many items in our space, and it starts to get out of control. That is when some decluttering is in order. As a pro tip, if you are somebody who is a sentimentalist and you're just starting out on your decluttering journey, do not, <laughs> I'm gonna repeat it, do not begin with sentimental items first. It will take too long and elicit one too many emotions, oftentimes stopping the decluttering momentum. If you're getting value from my video, support my coffee addiction by hitting that like button. Category or item number three, I never declutter in my home. And by the way, let me know if any of these items, drop a comment, any of these items, you're like, yeah, you know what, Margo? I will never declutter these either. So the next item are my photos. Here's the honest truth. I never declutter my photos. I love having photo albums like books, the tangible aspect of flipping through an album makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. I'm still the person who prints photos twice a year and even makes scrapbooks, sometimes documenting my family's travels. I am incredibly mindful of what I print and won't print multiples of the same type of photo when one suffices. So I'm not really accruing dozens of albums, but I will not subscribe to digital shenanigans. 
I also declutter the pictures off my phone once I print them. A lovely habit I've built over the years. Drop a comment, let me know, do you print your photos or am I like a dying breed? All right, I've gotten some hate over this next category that I never declutter in my home. And it is my refrigerator. <laughs> I have pictures of my family and my kiddos artwork on my fridge. Many people have mentioned that my fridge is super cluttered. While I admire walking into someone's home and seeing a clean fridge with nothing on it, it is aesthetically tidy. With that said, it is not an aesthetic that I subscribe to. That may change in the future when maybe I own one of those stainless steel smart fridges where it itself is a focal point in the kitchen. For now though, I happily enjoy looking at my family, my pup, and the drawing my little one did of a vase with flowers with a beautiful I love you sign on it every time I open my refrigerator to grab some water or make a sandwich. Next, my partner's stuff. I don't think it's a good idea to declutter our partner's things. Oftentimes, yes, they can benefit from some decluttering, especially when we ourselves are on this like clutter-free, clean and tidy home journey, we really want them to get on board as well. And when they're reluctant, sometimes we take matters into our own hands and start decluttering for them. And oftentimes that does not end well. Now, sure, have I gotten rid of a husband's item or two or five? and pretended like I didn't know where it was. And when asked if I'd seen it, I said, of course not, darling. <laughs> Baby, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't seen it, what? Decluttering is such a personal process that I feel like we are robbing them of choice. As frustrating as it may be to live in a home with them being the clutter bug, I've coached many women through decluttering their homes and it's challenging, emotional, and really comes down to mindset. Understanding how difficult it is for some of us to part with our items, it's important and more sustainable if our partners go through their version of the journey as well. Leading by example is a great place to start, focusing on decluttering our own things first and then maybe little by little involving them in the process might be the better way to start. Keep what you need and love. Toss the stuff that's causing you to clean incessantly. Gives you stress and anxiety and prevents you from enjoying your home. For support and accountability while you're on your decluttering journey, I encourage you to join my free Facebook group, Declutter Your Life and connect with incredible women, as well as have access to me and weekly themes and tips and support. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Thank you so much for watching. As always, good luck on your decluttering journey and remember to be good to yourselves.